So. How's the weather where you guys are today? All right, so I think let's just, um, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about stuff. And then as people join, they'll join and probably won't really say hi or chat to people very much because um, it's kind of hard to keep an eye on comments while I'm, while I'm talking. But um, we'll see how we can do it, okay? Ooh, sunny with a high of 81. Yeah, it's not sunny here. See, I just said I wasn't going to do that. Um, it's probably going to be warm here, but it's not sunny so it's going to be muggy which is typical for Houston in the spring so yeah oh sunny sounds nice it was nice yesterday um this is our typical Houston weather which is so lovely as I say with a very sarcastic <laughs> tone in my voice all right I want to go through today in our live I don't want it to be a long live because I do load these over onto YouTube and I know that some people who are watching this on YouTube are um, have low bandwidth they can't necessarily watch a long video so I just want it to be a quick check-in see how things are going maybe talk about some yellow stuff today because it's the last week of May and it's the last week of our color challenge so but for first of all I really wanted to show you guys this new paper which is not really that new it's actually I think it came out in January but um it's the Wonder Collection, Wonders Collection from Paige Taylor Evans. It's a collection she has with American Crafts. But um, I wanted to kind of flip through it really quick, give you an like a visual of a live view of this paper because it's really pretty and it's really hard to show it online. It's really hard to get a good idea of really what the scale of everything is and how it looks when you're just looking at an image on the computer but um you know that's the best we can really do as far as how it goes on the computer but the um there's 24 different pages which is almost 48 which is 48 designs because it's double-sided and i don't have page number five but i have all the other designs and i have a bundle which is all 20 which is 23 sheets of paper because i don't have number five but um there's so many pretty pages that, you know, I think having that, missing that one, maybe you wouldn't probably notice all that much if you don't have it because, you know, it's one less paper to worry about, I guess. So, um, this one is the tags, which I love that it has tags that you can cut apart and just immediately put them, in, put into tuck spots in your journals and your albums. And then, um, see, it's double-sided tags. So one side has words and the other side is just really pretty. Um phrases and things like that and then you could even cut apart some little some little journal spots there so that's number 12 but it's um my favorite one so I have it on the front I don't think I have all of these in order because I was doing pictures and trying to some of them have such large uh designs on them it's hard to kind of do just a, a fan view but um so but this is a bundle that I have this as a bundle and I have individual sheets of this paper in the store. So in peacecraftlove.com. So um, just look up Paige Evans Wonders. Uh, there's a link at the top too under the papers tab that's for new papers. And there's a link directly to the Wonders collection. It shows you not just the paper, but all the stickers and embellishments that I have as well. So, um, so here we are with this one, which is really pretty. It looks like mosaic kind of kale uh, kaleidoscope look to it and that's really fun really big print nice for like a cover this one's more of just a blender page on the back blender I say blender because that's like that's like a quilting term but um you know more of a solid with a little bit of a shade from darker to lighter stripes with some purple hearts yay purple Oh yeah, yellow. Yellow is good. Remember, color challenge. Perfect for our color challenge this month. Um, yeah, if you order today, you probably get it before the end of the month. Um, not sure, but I'm pretty caught up on orders at this point. So, 
blue that looks kind of like uh, Moroccan tiles, um, which I really love that, that look of that repeating pattern. To me, it looks very quilty, <laughs> and I love anything that looks quilty. So here's a smaller print on the back. That's design number three. All over floral, some yellow featured here with some nice contrast um, of that corally color and a little bit of blue in the number four paper. And here is an all over geometric design. Again, I really like any any paper that has any designs that have that geometric overall look to them. Here's number six with a darker one. This has a dark at the bottom. Can't don't know if it's easy to tell or not that it's darker at the bottom than it is at the at the top. It's like a a little bit of an ombre. Um, I have this giant light over here shining on this, so hopefully not taking it's helping take away the glare or the the shadow but not I mean, not creating much of a shadow here's number seven it's got a pink and a little bit of purple yellow flowers nice purple on the back butterflies number eight green this is a pretty one it's just like a big Perfect for, you know, an actual scrapbook memory page because it's got a big feature focal point, but I'm sure that it could be used for some other creative endeavors out there. Also really nice geometric on the back. Blue diamonds, number 11 with a blue sky on the back. This one I thought was really cool because it looks like paint, which I love, of course. And then I have a page from my uh, Cocoa Vanilla line, not my line, but the line from Cocoa Vanilla called Sunkist. And that paper is selling out very quickly and almost gone. And um, Marsha from Fro Frolicking Fairy did a really neat card using yellow and a paper that looks similar to this, the one from Cocoa Vanilla, as her background for the, uh, the stamp set from... Colorado Craft Company that has the little mouse and the dog with the with the paintbrush and it was just the perfect little card so um you can look on Frolicking Fairy's Instagram page and see that or you can um but this one looked a lot like that paper and I thought that was pretty cool because I'm almost out of that paper but I have a whole bunch of this paper so it has a nice pinky purple on the back here's a nice big yellow design yay for yellow <laughs> for this month green on the back here are what I call border strips or uh, cut apart page pieces but it can also work really well as just a plain page and blue geometric on the back more like an aqua light blue all over flower with some stripes. These stripes are cool because they're not perfectly uniform stripes, so it kind of neat gives a neat um, visual effect of movement there. Here are some journaling cards, cut apart on one side of this paper, number 17, and just plain orange, well not plain, but some orange on the back. It has a really cool um, mottled effect down here. I don't know how easily you can see it, but it has a really nice, I just love that, anything that kind of looks like imperfect. So I like that it's brand new paper, but it looks a little imperfect, like it's been painted. Here's some blue flower, purple flowers on a blue background, and pink. This one, of course, I love because anybody can guess, it looks like a quilt. And so it's actually small images of a lot of the papers, but there's actually some that are not paper designs. Um, I believe on here and so it creates a really neat patchwork effect and I know this isn't unique to this line but it's a kind of a signature Paige Evans look some pretty blue on the back kind of looks like stars celestial look to it here are some birds and I thought this looked a lot like a like a William Morris kind of print even though it's bright um, it reminded me of William Morris designs. 
and some this one has a little more orangey coral at the bottom and it goes in almost like an ombre going up to the pink which is nice here is a tile look you can cut these apart and use them of course or you could use this whole page as just a nice background for a page of course you guys are probably more of the <laughs> more of the scrapbookers than I am or the paper crafter than I am. So it would be, I'm sure you will come up with some amazing things to do with these papers. I'm very excited. This is my own. I bought this set so that I could have it to play with, make some albums, do some fun paper crafting and dive into that. Get my fingers sticky with paint or tape and not just paint. And on the back of this one, we have envelopes, which are nice because, you know, we want to send people some hugs through the mail. And so, um, I know. Um, uh, send them. This is a nice little accent that you can have. You can also cut these apart and put them in your journals or your albums um, in those little pockets. Now that I've started watching more videos about how to do albums that have these little pockets in them, my brain focuses on all of these pages that have these cut apart pieces and how can I use the cut aparts in my, um, in my projects. Here's another one that's journaling cards. These are nice for background pieces, but also in matting your photos, you could mat some little pictures. Um, they're smaller. These are probably three by four, I would say. That's about a four. Oh, I was almost there. Yeah, three by four, three by four. Actually, these would make good backgrounds for artist trading cards too. Um, you could mount it on a you could use it as a background for an artist trading card if you wanted to. This one is a big overall green print. These are the ones that don't photograph well when you're trying to do a fan of all the different papers because it's a big design and you can't just show one little sliver of it. It's not gonna give you the same effect. So that's why I'm doing this. Oh yay, a nice bright yellow. Yay, this is so pretty. Bright, but not too bright, you know, kind of sunshiny yellow, not super, super make your eyes hurt yellow. Um, this one's kind of a nice look. Again, I think it looks kind of like a quilt. Look a little bit like the clamshells, but maybe a little bit less rounded. So it has more of a point at the top. I'm sure there's a name for that. But, um, just definitely makes me think of a quilt. I kind of wonder if Paige Evans is a quilter, but I don't know. I haven't really asked her. Um, this one's number nine, and I don't know why I had it in the back. But, um, again, overall, big design. Pretty sure I saw this one used by Amber from Lyric Lover Crafts on YouTube. And I'm pretty sure she used it as the as the cover of one of her albums. So even when it's just folded, you know, parts of it make a really make a really cool cover. It could still be used even though. And then this one is nice plants. If you're a plant front person, these are the only kind of plants I could prob probably ever keep alive because I am not a plant person. I have tried. I do have some pothos plants that are surviving because they are just like the, the hardiest plant ever, but um, in my bathroom. But um, I mean, I'm really surprised they're still alive, but I've killed all my other plants. <laughs> so these are really pretty. And I, and you know, if you're a plant person or you um, enjoy plants, you probably enjoy having some images of plants. Again, you could cut them out. That'd be kind of neat to fussy cut them, use them as an accent on a page. Here's another all over design, number 19. And this is one of my favorite ones because it has the word wonderful really big all the way across it. And it's just a fun page. You know, you can cut this out. You could use it over again. You could just cut off the word and use wonder. You could cut the letters apart and make different words. I don't know what other words you could make, but you could maybe make some different other, other words out of this. A lot of possibilities for this paper. So that's the Wonders line. I have stickers. I have chipboard stickers. I have ephemera. She has ephemera florals and other ephemera packages that are um, both... Uh, you know, has words and other designs. So that probably that go along with her, like probably butterflies and um, other geometric designs that go within there. If you look on the website under there, under that ephemera page, you'll see a, a flat lay picture of all the 
designs that are in the ephemera pack. Um, chipboard, stickers, flowers. She has dimensional paper flowers, so I bought those. I bought pretty much all the stuff you could get. Um, the sticker books are on order. They were back ordered when I bought them. But everything else, um, papers, individual papers or bundles. I have the bundles. Um, 23 sheets of paper, all of them except number 20 uh, number 5 because number 5 is back ordered until May or June. I don't I don't know why, but that one is for some reason. So, I hope you'll go check that out um when we're done here and pick one of those up and I am caught up on orders right now, so um anything that you order today will probably go out in the next couple of days, so pretty quick. Um okay. I'll put that off to the side and then over the weekend I know you guys are just dying to know this. Um, <laughs> um, I did an online free retreat weekend that Jenny from um, Flow by Jenny, Jenny Grant, um, hosted. And it was really fun to just dive in, join people on the Facebook group, book group chat with them, and then um, watch her videos on how to do different techniques for collage. She is the most fun art at collage person. She does tons of um, like grungy, dark collage, not dark, but, um, really pretty stuff. So she always starts with collage. And so she did these books. So I did a book, um, she calls it the book of flow. And I actually have that class. Um, and as I'm doing things, I'm learning like what my style is. I don't really feel like I have a good art style. I have, I definitely have a good, um, quilting style because I've been doing that for probably for more than 10 years and so I feel like my quilt style is pretty pretty established even though it's improv and it's make it up and it's not follow a pattern and it's do whatever you want but you know that's actually also my art style I suppose um but I feel like with my art style I definitely always when I when I do collage I always want to pull in some pattern pieces because I, I want to have something that rem reminds me of quilting and sewing, even though I'm not really much of a sewer, but um, I've never really made a garment. But I do love using pattern pages in my in my collage and in my art stuff. Um, everything I do will have some sort of pattern paper in it. Um, here's one that I did as part of that class because she did it on a um, canvas and I thought that was really cool. So I just did mine on a canvas and, you know, cut pieces out from a from a pattern. You know, because there's so many patterns out there and um, the ones I have are mostly like they're so old and brittle that they're just falling apart. And so I just, um, so I just love being able to take something that's kind of old and probably would have been thrown away or even hopefully recycled or something. Or as she was saying, as Jenny was saying in her class was she, the books she got that she bought from a, she got out of a dumpster and they were going to be burned or something. And so it just... We're trying to take things that are old and probably would have been discarded and, and hopefully turn them into something that's useful and pretty and give it a little bit more life to it than um, just throwing it away. Um, so that's the, kind of the perspective that I take on it. But I also appreciate that it's hard to take and, and use papers that are have some sort of like... Um, sentimental attachment to them like I have a whole a whole box of paper that my dad got for me at a run at a estate sale it's all super old paper it's really really cool I'd love to put it in all my junk in my junk journal my art journals but I don't want to because it's so precious because it's something he gave me and so even though he purposely gave it to me so that I can use it for this pr purpose but I started looking at it and thinking about all the history behind those papers which all they're all like bank um envelope bank Stuff. They're like old um, checks and things that people that somebody has saved. And so I start thinking about that history and then I don't want to use it. But this kind of thing when it's just um, most of this is just pages from a book and then um, some some pattern paper. And this is the instructions from the pattern. But I also love to use tissue, pattern tissue. And I actually have a map in here that's from Iowa, which is pretty cool because Iowa is where I was born, even though I don't I've never lived there really. But um I remember we we visited not long ago and I remember the names of the cities and so it it connected I connected to that and then I just of course scraped some paint paint over the top cuz that's kind of what she did in her and Jenny did in her process but 
normally I would work and do this kind of thing in a journal. And so for some reason I decided to do it on a canvas for this one. And then um, I did a few of them. She was like, oh, use something that's like, like that you would have normally thrown away, like a piece of cardboard or a piece of um, something, trash. And so I, basically this is a back of a, of a wrapper, uh, you know, the paper that comes inside of your packaging for your stickers, right? And so I have a whole lot of this because I have a lot of this product. And so I save these cardboard pieces and I save the plastic that they are wrapped in. And it turns out the plastic works really well when you're doing a book like this and you're gluing things inside and you need to um, protect your page so that the glue doesn't, if you put a piece of plastic in here while it's drying and you want to go to another page, this one I glued in and what, this is what Jenny did. She took her piece of plastic and you put it inside here and then when you can flip the page, it won't stick. When you want to go to another page and glue another page in and then, so I've learned that like the plastic packaging that I have from my stickers and my stamps and things, I can just, that I've saved because I didn't know why. I just didn't want to throw it away. You can't recycle it. And so um, I've learned you can use that pa that packaging. And then if in some cases, uh, you might end up just gluing it in. That's what I did here because it was, this magazine page was so thin, it was just peeling and peeling. And so I was like, well, let me just, you know, glue that piece of, of, of plastic in there. <laughs> Why not? Who cares? Um, it, it's, it's a design element now. So, um, this is a piece of music paper from, um, a book I bought from Ricky. So that's our book of flow. What she did with her book of flow was she actually stenciled and painted over the top of it. Um, but I love this so much. I didn't, I didn't really want to, um, I didn't want to cover it up. I liked it too much. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's some pattern. That's some pattern tissue over some other tissue that came as part of packing paper in a um, something that I bought from my friend Rose. And then there's some more pattern. So you'll see if you look at my stuff, you'll probably always see some sort of pattern tissue, pattern paper, um, probably some music paper because I was in. I played the flute for eight years of my life, and so music has always been a high, a big part of my life. And um, some sort of, hopefully, I started adding fabric into things because fabric is important to me too. So um, I'm starting to try to find things to add them into my art projects that I do that are unique, or not unique, but special to me. So part of what we did for her class was we did, or her this retreat that we did was we, um, so this is actually a canvas that I had, um, bought a long time ago I think from Goodwill and I ripped it off it was an old canvas somebody had donated to Goodwill on a frame and I ripped it off of the frame and at the time I just sewed the back all of it with black which is under here is black and so um I didn't know what to do with it I had it in about a size of a book I wanted and I put it away and then when she said she was using canvas as her base to um collage on I was like oh I have some canvas big surprise so I went and I grabbed my canvas and I grabbed my um soft gloss gel and my um which I would recommend getting matte gel but I can't find it right now I'm trying to get it for the store but I have I don't have it um but so I the cool part about the gloss gel is it just kind of makes it feel kind of leathery it's kind of neat it's got this really cool feeling to it um so yeah that's my book of that um I didn't set my timer I should have set a timer um this is one of the other ones we did. Uh, it was a collage thing I did, right? I just did it on the back of this piece of cardstock, whatever that comes in pay in the pay, um with products, and then I just collaged a whole bunch of stuff all over the top. Basically, just take old papers, gel medium, throw it down. Literally, this is a page from. I have a book that was like an architecture book, and I liked it because it has all of these top down view of uh, floor plans of churches and actually they're funny because they're all pretty much they look the same but um it had a whole bunch of these these pages but it has probably four or five hundred three hundred pages in there and it's not a big book it has some really neat um black and white images of uh, everything in the book is black and white of um architecture so 
threw some of that on there. This is a piece of uh, deli paper that I scrunched up and glued down to give it some texture. This is the back of, this is a security envelope. And what Jenny does is she finds faces, and I know uh, Tiffany from T Southern Gal Designs does this too. She'll look at her page and she'll see eyes and, and she'll see a face. And so from that point, you kind of say, oh, that looks like an eye, that looks like an eye, that looks like a nose. And then I'm just gonna go and um, start adding to that. So these are the ones that I did. And then Jenny goes and puts a lot of stenciling. So I added some stenciling on mine. I really am proud of these. I think they look really pretty. I like this one. She looks kind of like, like a pixie or something like to me, her little nose. She has like a, her circle nose. I don't know, round nose. Um, and then this one, she was just kind of hiding off to the side. All right, so um, last little thing. I wanna talk a little bit about yellow again. This week my plan was to talk about, um, where's my book? It was to talk about focal points. But honestly, I'm not the best person to talk about focal points. <laughs> um, but I will give it a try. So um, where's my page? There's one, yeah, this was a page we did last week. So um, the thing I find is with focal points, there's a lot of information you can get everywhere else. Don't take my word for it. I'm not an expert. I don't even know how to do focal points most of the time. I like to do backgrounds. That's what I like to do. Um, but what I find helps is you get something that's like a, um, a page of Dina Wakely collage paper. And... She has some new ones um, that just came out. I don't even know what they look like, but I'm going to order them for the store. She just announced it the other day. Um, I'm trying to remember which book I put in my did my other one. I don't remember where I put it. Um, I have too many journals going on right now, but this paper is really cool because it... Um, it's white, she has white, and then she'll have the designs on black, with black on white. And because it's tissue paper, it just melts into the page. It just melts, and so there's no real, um, there's no lines around it. So it looks absolutely like you drew it. I'm really trying to find the one that I did already. Um, it's in here. Um, So you just kind of, what I do, because I don't draw very great, um, I'll just pick one of hers and I'll see what kind of calls out to me. The other day I did this one. And you just cut it out and then use gel medium and just glue it down. So the thing about doing a focal point is that you want to have it's what you literally draw your eye to, what your eye draws to, right, on the page. So um, you don't necessarily want to have something over here and something over here and something up here that's going to make it confusing as to where you're supposed to look. So it's good to group an item, group your items in one place. So I would probably take this one. And what I decided the other day was... If I use one pa one part of the um, paper, then I'm going to use the whole thing. This one's kind of tall. That one's too big. So I'm trying to use the whole page instead of just leaving bits and pieces. Let's see, and she does. Um, she gives us some really cool words here to put in there too, if you don't like your handwriting. Has anybody ever used, the question I have is, have you ever used her stuff from her collage collective book, which is so cool, I never know how to use it. <laughs> but. So um, then you would just get your gel 
medium, which is the best medium, I think, for collaging. I have a lot of different kinds. I have collage podge. I have a PVA, PPA glue. This guy um, could work. And I have... This one, Art Gloss Gel, that I actually put in this little bottle because to me it's easier to dispense it if it's in this little bottle. And then um, this bottle ran out because I was using so much of it when I was collaging this weekend. Also, if you're doing something that's thicker, multi-medium matte is great because it's thick. it literally is thicker. So it has a little more, um, I don't know, tooth to it. It just grabs better. Um, I have so many different kinds of glue. It's it's just it's really quite crazy. So, um, but we'll just do this. Put some medium down, and this is kind of what I learned over the weekend to use the palette knife. And I do have palette knives in the store. And if you tell me that you um, watch my live or you watch my YouTube and you want me to send you one, I will give in you order. I will send you a palette knife, a plastic one that is a Dina Wakely palette knife. But if you mention that in the comments, if you buy something, I will send you one for free. But you have to tell me that you saw it on a Facebook or on a, on a live or you watched it on a YouTube, right? See how that just melts into the background? It's just gorgeous. It's like, hey, she drew that. No, I didn't. Dina Wakely drew it, but you know what? That's okay. I just love how tissue just melts into the background. Have you guys ever used, oh, uh, napkins are so fun to use for collage because they are the same way. The thing about napkins is you have to, they have, paper napkins have multiple layers. So you have to separate the white layer from the, um, from the picture layer. But once you do that, the top layer of tissue is so thin, it just collages on so beautifully. I actually was in, I'm in a Facebook group, um, that Carolyn Doobie hosts and I coordinated a, a napkin swap. And it was really fun. Like I just had everybody send me like however many napkins they wanted to swap. And then I swapped them all out and sent everybody back new napkins. And I ended up with like 40 or 50 different napkin designs. So it was really fun. It really, it reminded me of my old days when I used to do, I used to do fat quarter swaps for quilting. I even did card swaps because I was in a, I would think I was in a Yahoo group for, um, a message board back when a long time ago when uh for stamping up when i used to sell stamping up stuff so but um so see it just is now there's something for your eye to look at on the page and it is pretty cool and then i can add some journaling over here if i want to and that's kind of i think that's kind of the basics of a focal point you know i don't really know like i said i'm not really much for focal points i'm just more of a backgrounds person but i do like adding that element of um That little element of collage of the Dina Weekly because her, her paper is so fun. And I have seen her do this where she'll spray the back of her, of the paper, the white paper, she'll spray it with gloss spray so that it shows up better on a plain background. Look at this one, it's kind of just scrape, scrapey scrapes. That's fun. I hadn't even looked at all of these. So. So many fun things. Also some new stamps that she has. Ooh, this one's fun. It has like, I should have looked at all these. That one reminds me of Shirley Temple. I like that there's different sizes so you can use them in different places. Like that would be fun. I don't know. So, um, yeah. So that's pretty much um, my take on focal points. Sorry, it's not very scientific, but... <laughs> That's how I work. So, um, yeah. So for the for the color challenge, please make sure that you uh, share your pictures and tag. Share your pictures. Tag me. Use the tag PCL Color Challenge so that you can. So I'll know that you're participating. Really, the the rules are: use any yellow, 
um, in a project. It can be any kind of project. Obviously, I don't always do cards. You can do cards. You can do any kind of album, scrapbook, paper, fabric, whatever you want to do. Um, tag me, and then I will enter you in a drawing to win a $25 gift card that I will announce on the 1st of June. So that June? No, May. <laughs> 1st of May. So that... Um, we will see who wins the $25 gift card for participating. The more times you post and share and tag me and tag the ta the hashtag, the more times you're entered. And if you don't want to tag, if you don't want to post and you just want to email me, you can send me an email. Uh, my contact information is on my, uh, on my website and on my, um, on my bio if you want to go on the bio and check it out. And you can get all that, a lot more information about the color challenge on my blog too and... Also, I have a Facebook page, which I'll go live on Friday for the Facebook page around 9 o'clock. So uh, that's about what I've got today. Um, please be sure if you've just joined me that you want to go back and I'll be posting this on YouTube in a little while so that you can um, watch the whole replay. I did do a little flip through of all the Wonders paper from Paige Evans at the beginning. And um, then I did some other random ramblings. So... Thank you for all for joining me, and I will see you guys on Friday, hopefully. Bye-bye. I want to say toodaloo because that's what Tiffany says, but that's, that's her sign-off. So, Okay, so see you guys later.